Today we have a very exciting guest. His name is Nandan Banerjee. He's a senior robotics software engineer with iRobot, the company who makes Roomba, the vacuum robot. Nandan's expertise is in robotics localization and mapping. He's one of the key engineers who built lifelong mapping for Roomba. Nandan, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me on your channel, Saina. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here talking about the work that I do. So a uh, little bit about me. I was born in India. I did my schooling in India. I did my undergraduate education at National Institute of Technology in Durgapur in computer science. And after that, I worked for a year at Samsung Research in Bangalore. And after one year stint over there, I came to the US, enrolled in the master's in robotics program at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. While I was over there, I was associated with the DARPA Robotics Challenge, and I got to work on the $2 million Atlas robot, predominantly working on getting the robot to accomplish the door task, which uh, basically entailed uh, the robot uh, detecting a door, walking to it, opening it, and then walking through the door. And after that, I joined iRobot as a robotic software engineer. I've been involved in a variety of things. I worked on manipulation initially, and then I moved over to working on mapping and navigation for the Roomba and Brava line of robots. Cool. So a bachelor's degree in computer science, an internship with Samsung. Then you came to the United States and did your master's with WPI. And now you're working for iRobot as a robotics software engineer. So was your master's in robotics software engineering? No, uh, so it's a uh, master's in robotics engineering. It's not particularly software. So, in, so there's this course at WPI where they give you a master's in robotics and you get to choose what courses you take, obviously. But uh, the prime, some of the mandatory courses are on robot controls and robot dynamics. And that, that has more of a mechanical and control spent. And there are courses on motion planning, computer vision, which has more of a software bent. Right now, I believe you have all the new emerging technologies related to AI and machine learning and deep learning. So that, that also has more of a software uh, side to it. So it was a mix of both mechanical and software, yeah. Uh, so why did you decide to become a robotics software engineer? Initially, when I was doing my bachelor's in India, I already had some programming experience from when I was in high school. I used to program quite a bit. And well, once I started my bachelor's education, I f found that some of the courses were not living up to my expectations and I dabbled into other things. I wanted to know how computers worked underneath the electronics, the electrical side of it, right? And I dabbled, started dabbling in microcontrollers. And uh, from there, uh, I started building robots, like small teeny tiny robots, uh, like mobile robots or robots with arms for various competitions and things like that. And that's kind of piqued my interest. And the more I got to know, more I got to learn about embedded uh, controls and embedded programming and, and creating embedded circuits. I thought that's what I wanted to do. And that's why right after that, I joined Samsung, where I was working on embedded software. And after working over there a little bit, I found that I wanted to delve deep into the algorithm side of it. And that's when I decided, oh, it makes sense for me to pursue robotics. Did you do any internship after you got maybe your bachelor's degree or your master's degree? Uh, I actually did two internships, one during my bachelor's and one during my master's. During my bachelor's, I did an internship at the Variable Energy Cyclotron Center, which is basically a government research institution on particle physics. When I was doing my master's, I interned at this company called Vecna Robotics. That's in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, I, I got to work on uh, the Canadian robotics company, Kinova, their Jayco arm. So Kinova is Jayco arm. And I, I did a bunch of calibration techniques and kinematic uh, parameter estimation. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've heard of Kinova. So now you're a senior robotics software engineer with uh, iRobot. What do you do as a robotics software engineer? I, I do a bunch of things. Depends on the work that I have. There are various projects at iRobot, right? And mm -hmm. um, like, like for example, in the map mapping and navigation team, uh, when I started working on it back in 2016, I I started working on lifelong mapping. So that's so back then iRobot didn't have any robots that did lifelong mapping. I robot, I'll explain what lifelong mapping is. It's basically the ability of a robot to do a run, map an environment, right? Using uh, SLAM mm -hmm. techniques, SLAM being simultaneous localization and mapping, and then save the map at the end of the run. And then at the beginning of the next run, load that map 
and use that map to uh, navigate the space again and update the map with any changes in the environment, right? Like for example, you change how your pictures are moved around. So it updates your landmarks based on that, or you change, move the location of the couches or uh, dining table or something, right? That updates your occupancy map and then save that again. And you keep on doing it every single time. So this differs from a lot of uh, robots in, uh, that are used right now in the sense that they create a map at the beginning and they keep on using the same map f for months end before uh, they realize that, oh, you know what, the map, the space has changed, so we need to map again. So what we do, what lifelong mapping helps us achieve is you, you keep on updating the same map, the same environments map over and over again uh, during every single run. And this is tricky because you have to take into account a lot of things and keep things stable and uh, make sure nothing crashes. And it's like after 500 runs that the map is still usable and things like that. Yeah, I started working on this research project and back in 2016. And then in 2018, we started working on deploying it on our robots. So it was like w one and a half to two years of research work. And then I started working on the actual implementation of it on the robot, right? And I now see. it's it's in uh, like ten, hundreds of thousands of users' homes. I actually have a Roomba robot at home. Oh, that's nice. Which I bought, I believe, back in 2015. So does my robot have a lifeline mapping? That robot would just use Slam to map the space and at the end would just forget the map. The new ones give you the ability to use that map. And you can do fancy things like uh, ask the robot to go clean the kitchen or go clean the bedroom and things like that, right? This is what lifelong mapping enables. Okay, so now I know I need to buy a new Roomba, Roomba robot to do those fancy stuff. What are the top three programming languages that a robotics software engineer needs to know? Right now, I believe C, C and C++ is very essential. Because uh, all of, all, like if you want to deploy whatever you write onto a robot that's running in the wild, uh, it needs to be properly optimized. It needs to be fast and uh, a lot of the deep learning work that's being done uh, that that, uh, that you experiment with in Python, it, you need to convert that to C, C++ code, I believe. So I'd say the top is C++, right, as a deployment language on your robot. Then for prototyping stuff or experiment experiments, uh, it's definitely Python. It's one of the best things out there. And, uh, and number three would be become a little bit proficient in SQL queries and trying to optimize my queries. So to summarize, it's C, S, C++, Python, and SQL. Mm -hmm. So now, what are the top three courses for robotics software engineering? Well, that's a tough one. Uh, so first, I'd say I'd want to divide it into software engineering skills and the robotics. Because like, if you want to do really cool stuff in robotics, first, you need to be adept with uh, writing proper software. And that that's not something you can learn in a day. It takes time and experience. I mean, even for myself, the way that I used to program five years ago is very different from the way that I program now, right? So uh, right. like on software engineering, I'd say if you're doing your bachelor's in uh, computer science, that's definitely great. You get to learn a lot of software, core software engineering principles and programming principles, object-oriented programming. If you have a background in mechanical or uh, electrical or something else, and you want to move to this field, you one should definitely uh, take up some online courses on software engineering and learn Python and C++. And then on the robotics side, there are a bunch of things, right? I mean, you can, uh, you can take, there are very good deep learning courses on Udacity and Coursera. And then there's the core robotics stuff where you have courses on, like for mapping and navigation, you have courses on SLAM. I've only seen the Udacity one. So the self-driving car course, that, that's a very good course, which has talks a lot about SLAM and vision and Kalman filters and all of those things, all the math stuff. And if you're, uh, if you are unable to follow the math that's being described there, maybe you need to take a preliminary linear algebra math course and also probability and Bayesian statistics. It it's, depends on what you want to do, I guess. If you want to do all of these things or you want to learn a bit of each, then I'd suggest starting off with robot kinematics, dynamics, and then move on to higher stuff uh, like motion planning and mapping and navigation. Now, the question is, can, can someone land a job with just completing these online nano degree programs or do they need to have an official degree such as a bachelor's degree from an uh, accredited school? 
Uh, that's that's a very good question. I know that there are a lot of companies out there who hire directly from, who have interviewed people and have hired people based on their scores from these programs. So that's, that's definitely there. What I've generally seen is people having a bachelor's degree, at least, if not a bachelor's and a master's or a bachelor's and a PhD. Uh, at least a bachelor's degree, but while they're working, they also end up taking these courses to better their knowledge and use that as a stepping stone to change careers. Like say, for example, someone who's working as a software engineer in at Staples or Walmart or something, right? And they want to move to the self-driving industry or, or maybe even surgical robotics, right? So you would want to know a bit more about that industry or about those kinds of robots. So these courses will help you gain a little bit of knowledge that you can use to uh, move to switch to a di different part of your career, right? So you're basically saying that uh, some companies do hire graduates of these online programs directly and based on their scores, but your chances would be higher if you had an official degree such as a bachelor's. And then on top of it, you completed these online programs. Yeah. Okay, so now how much does a robotics software engineer make? Let's say with just five years of experience. I mean, it depends on which country you are in, right? Even in one country, which, which part of that country you're in. I'd Let's say, say in the US. In the US, definitely upwards of $100,000, I'd say, with uh, additional benefits. Because a lot of companies are very different, like even in the software in industry, right? I mean, we know that Netflix and Google and Amazon pay very high salaries compared to like Adobe, for example, right? So definitely not of uh, 100,000, maybe 120, 140, 150, depending on, your, on, on the project or things, yeah. If you were to start all over, would you do robotic software engineering or would you pick a different area in computer science? Oh, no, I definitely would do robotics, but uh, I probably would uh, change my bachelor's degree to deal with a little bit more of math. I, I feel that I should have taken some other courses on applied mathematics that would have made it made my life a little bit easier. <laughs> but I think that's the only thing I'd, I'd like to change. Apart from that, no. All right. Thank you very much, Nandan, for your time. I personally learned a lot about the SLAM and how robot vacuums work. And I truly enjoyed learning about your journey to becoming a robotic software engineer. So thank you again. Any, any last advice or comment for my audience? Robotics is an exciting field and there are plenty of opportunities. You're working on surgical robotics, I'm working on consumers. There's self-driving cars, there's robots in space, robots uh, underwater, lots of different opportunities. And it's, it's a very exciting field and it's here to stay. So I'd encourage whoever's listening in to definitely pursue robotics as a career choice.